I've often been asked how to use Fusion 360 and there are so many ways and so many good tutorials but one of the best exercises I found for learning how to be comfortable within Fusion 360 is to go through this little exercise of drawing one of the parts we teach on our CNC camming classes. So I'm going to go through this in the Fusion 360 and I encourage you to download this video, record this video, capture it however you want and practice because while, I, while I'm doing this I actually can draw this particular part in about four minutes without if I'm not talking and explaining. So here goes. So in Fusion 360 we're going to start with a sketch on the top plane. Now one of the golden rules of CAD okay, is to always draw from the center. So I've chosen a center constrained rectangle and I'm going to dimension it to be 100 millimeters wide by 50 millimeters uh, high. I'm going to finish that sketch and I'm going to run an extrude operation. Now Fusion 360 automatically chose my last sketch and I'm going to give this a height of 10 millimeters. So I now have a rectangular cube 100 by 50 by 10. Now I'm going to, in the front section here, I'm going to put a polygon. Okay, so I'm going to select my sketch tool and choose the top face of the rectangular cube. And I'm going to select a circumscribed polygon. And I'm going to float over the center point of the rectangular cube, go down and you can see that I'm being guided down to the midpoint of the rectangular cube. And I'm going to draw a hexagon. Now I need the top line, let's escape out of that, the top line of the hexagon to be parallel with the bottom line or bottom edge of my rectangular cube and I'm going to use a constraint for that. So I'm going to select my rectangular cube, I'm going to put my finger on shift and I'm going to use a constraint called parallel. Then I'm going to use the dimension tool and make it 35 millimeters. Now, if you notice, the, the hexagon went from a blue to a black color, indicating that this hexagon, this sketch, is fully constrained. Let's finish that sketch, and I'm going to use the extrude function again, but this time in reverse, because I am going to remove material. And I'm going to hit minus 10. And there we go. We have now created a cutout, a polygon cutout, in this rectangular cube. Now, let's put a pocket that is inset from the edge. So I'm going to choose another sketch and I think you guys are getting the pattern here that most of the features that you create will start with a sketch. I'm going to choose an offset. I'm going to go minus eight to bring it inside. I can use the arrows here, okay, but I just find typing minus eight much easier. And we're going to finish that sketch and we're going to use that same extrude function and this time I'm going to go right here and type minus eight millimeters deep. And it's a cut function. We've now got a pocket. Now a few of the things that are actually irritating me a little bit here are these sharp edges. So let's do a fillet. So I'm going to choose that edge, that edge, reach through there, that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge. Oops, let's rotate that a bit. Okay, and my fillets are going to be 4.5 millimeters. You know what, I think let's also do the insides. Now I could do another sketch function, but I'm going to go back into the library or the history here. I'm going to keep, put my finger on control. And excuse me, you guys are about to hear me sneeze. Those of you saying bless you, it's, yes it is helping. Up, we over. Up. Sketch, sketch, sketch. I'm glad I think I've missed one. Yeah, there it is. Okay, looking good. Okay, and let's put a little chamfer on that edge because we are designing this to be machined, so I do want a nice sharp edge. I'm going to make it, uh, not sharp edge, blunt edge, so 0.25. Just need to take the edge off. Okay, let us add something to this. I would like to put a hole, a, a, let's say a four millimeter drilled hole in each one of these corners. Now I can draw it here, but I'm actually going to use this feature here and I'm going to go back to there. In fact, let's go a little bit even further back. 
Okay. Uh, no, we'll go over there. Okay. I'm going to use this new sketch. And you can see I'm going to create a sketch from that point. I'm going to draw a hole. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut this time. And these two lines that I've drawn here are actually construction lines. So I'm going to make them construction. They're going to be guides for me. So let's do some dimension. Let's break out of that dimension. We want that to be four millimeters. I want it to be from the center of the circle, six millimeters from each edge. That's looking good. And now I'm going to mirror this. I don't have to draw it again. So I'm going to select the object to mirror, and that's this line. And I'm going to mirror it across there. Let's move that out so you can see that there. Okay, let's do another mirror function. Start with this one and this one, and I'm going to mirror it across this line. Perfect. Let's finish that sketch. I'm going to do an extrude. I'm going to pick this feature, this feature, this feature, and this feature. Okay, and we are going to go straight down the bottom. I'm just going to click that face as quick as quicker than me typing minus ten. We have holes now. If I wind it back. You can see all the holes plus the chamfer I put on that edge is all there. Okay, now I encourage you guys to do this drawing again and again and again and again. The repetition of doing it again will make you faster and more comfortable within Fusion 360. It will make taking future tutorials much easier because you're no longer worrying about keyboard shortcuts or being uncomfortable in a program that could be quite unfamiliar to you. I thank you for your time, and I will hopefully have some more tutorials later.